What's going on everybody? This video we're going to be talking about a for loop that counts down instead of counts up. It's not crazy different. The only difference is that you'll need to change the condition and you'll need to change the update so that you're decrementing instead of incrementing. And you can do all kinds of different variations. You can work with multiple variables or you could increase or decrease a variable by two and essentially skip every other one or any other possible variations. We're not going to talk about all of them, but we are going to talk about counting down in this video. This video is sponsored by Visual Assist, which compared to vanilla Visual Studio introduces many new capabilities. So massive improvements on searching and navigation, refactoring, code generation, and plenty more. So definitely check it out. It's a plugin for Visual Studio. If you've been following along building C++ in Visual Studio, check out Visual Assist. Let's first take a look at a basic for loop and make sure we understand what's going on. We start with some value zero. We compare it to some ending. This, In this case, that ending is guesses, which is passed in. Guess count plus plus is how we get closer to that value. But as long as guess count is less than guesses, it will continue to run this loop. Inside the loop, we have them guess a number, check if that number is the correct answer. If it is, we return true, which just ends the loop and the entire function. Otherwise, we say too low or too high and output how many times they've guessed. Now we're saying guess count plus one because we're starting guess count at zero, which is an important thing to kind of understand. You don't have to start guess count at zero. You could just start it at one, but usually four loops will start at zero. It's just good to become familiar with that structure. And this is closely tied with the indexes of an array, which is index starting at zero. So if you have an array of five elements, you'll do index zero, one, two, three, and four. So for me, I just typically start at zero. It's easier to do that way when you're so used to doing it that way for multiple scenarios in programming. I think when you're first getting started, it's a little bit confusing, but I've grown to prefer using just the less than operator and not so much the less than or equal to operator because it's very easy to mess up your calculations and go one too far or one too short. So for example, if we started this at one and then we had guess count down here just being displayed normally, but we forgot to do less than or equals to, then this is not going to run the correct number of times. So when it comes to testing, what is often done to get a good test coverage is you will test the edge cases. If you have a range of possibilities, you'll often want to test the beginning and the end, as well as what happens right before the end or one past that end. That's where things tend to go wrong. So if I was to test this function, either with some automated testing or just manually, I would want to make sure that we actually get the correct number of tests. We don't get one extra or one too little, but I'm kind of getting off topic. So let's get back to the focus of this video, which was decrementing. So what we will do is instead of starting guess count at one, we will start it at whatever guesses is. So let's assume guesses, we get five guesses we're going to basically set guess count to five and then start counting down. Now I don't like the name of this anymore because it doesn't really say what, what it is. It's not the guess count. Instead, it might be something like guesses left. And then we'll say guesses left being greater than, and instead of comparing it to guesses, we'll say zero. So as long as we have more than zero guesses left, we will continue to run this code. But if we leave it at so, it's not going to work. For one, we would need to change this to guesses left and we would want to decrement it. Now, that's a little bit better. And I have a typo here, so let's go ahead and fix that. So this all looks good. Now we just need to change the output. So first, we're not gonna say you've guessed guess guesses left that doesn't make sense so we'll change this to guesses left and we'll say you have guesses left and then we'll literally just say guesses left so right now it's not it's not quite there because i'll show you here what actually happens 
I'll move this over so you can see the code. So when we play this game, you get five guesses, we guess a number, and it says you have five guesses left. This is a similar problem to what we faced when we were incrementing in, in the previous video. Since the decrement doesn't happen until after this output, I would just say guess is left minus one. So now that we have that minus one, let's test this out. So we have five guesses, we guess a number, and it says too low, and then you have four guesses left. Three guesses left, two guesses left, one guess left, and then it ends. So it appears to be working. Now, just like I mentioned with incrementing, you can change the way you set this up and still get the same functionality. You can do that here. So if you didn't want to do guesses left minus one for some reason, you could say guesses left is guesses minus one, and then guesses left greater than or equal to zero. And in this situation, we basically just shifted it over one. And now we guess a number it still says you have four guesses left. Three, two, one, and then it ends. So either one works, but again, I don't like this as much because on that first run, we're going to have guesses left set to four, even though we haven't actually completed the guess yet. So to me, I don't really like this setup. I'm kind of weird and picky and I'm kind of getting into my personal preference. This isn't by any means the only way to do it. I have just grown to always be shifted over one when we're incrementing, so starting at zero. And then if I'm decrementing, I like to use the actual number not shifted over one. So having five guesses left, four, three, two, and one. Maybe I'm just inconsistent and an idiot, but that's just the way I've grown to prefer it. But honestly, I'm just splitting hairs at this point, you can do it either way, whatever, just try to make sure your loops work, check to make sure they run the appropriate number of times, not one too many or one too little. And the primary reason when incrementing, I've grown to like just starting at zero, as mentioned before, is because often with loops, you're going through an array and arrays are indexed at zero. We haven't talked about arrays, but this would be the perfect time to transition into content on arrays, which is actually what we're gonna be doing in the next video. And this, we're going to start a completely new project, so we're done with this guessing game for now. Probably not going to work on it anymore in this series. So we're going to start something new, which is the whole idea of having multiple items in an array, or you can think of it as a list. Let's say you wanted to make a shopping list or keep track of foods you've eaten or whatever it might be where you wanna keep track of multiple things, that's where an array is going to come in. We're gonna talk about how to do loops for arrays, all kinds of cool things. So thank you so much for watching up until this point. Definitely encourage you to stick through the rest of the series, get some more practice. Things are gonna be fun. The next app we're making is cool, so stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.